So I recently finished playing Call of Duty World War II on the PlayStation 4. Call of Duty World War II is a interesting experience. Technically, I think it has a lot of issues. Uh, a lot of times the cutscenes will stutter and lag in a really weird way. And there's a lot of little bugs and glitches that happen throughout my playthrough in the campaign. The character performances are really hit or miss, which is kind of bad considering how much emphasis they put on the performers that they get for the game and the story. It, it just kind of, I didn't really understand why certain characters were talking the way they were based on the context that they were in. And it really sucked me out of the experience as a result. If Call of Duty games are good at one thing, it's creating really good set-piece moments for their levels, and this game is no exception. There are some really cool standout levels, like flying up in a plane, and one mission in particular where you're doing some espionage in a German stronghold inside of France, where you basically kickstart the French uh, reoccupation or the French retaliation. And I think those missions are really cool, and. I would say you should pick up the game based on those missions alone. It's a really interesting and unique campaign to have come out of a Call of Duty game in a while. That said, in terms of the story of the game, while a game like Battlefield V uh, praised itself on picking lesser known uh, areas of World War II, this game is pretty much the most American Western Front World War II video game you can play. I mean, the first mission is storming the beaches at Normandy. So I think it's definitely not as original as it could be, but for the most part, it's not that bad. It, it, it's pretty fun. The sound design in the game is actually pretty phenomenal. I really liked a lot of the gun sound effects and the explosions. They just did a really good job of putting a lot of really high quality sound work into the game. There's some interesting gameplay changes from the campaign. Like I had said before, there's that espionage mission, which is really stealth-based, and there's no weapons in it, which is really interesting. For the first time in a while, this is a Call of Duty game that doesn't have regenerating health. You actually have to use health packs, which I really liked at first, but then I realized that the health packs are so plentiful that you pretty much have regenerating health. You can just point to one of your squad mates and ask them to give you a health pack, and you'll be back up in no time. That's another interesting aspect are squad mechanics. They have some really light squad mechanics like telling your squad members to go this way or to hand you ammo or health. So it's little touches like that that really added up and made this campaign in particular stand out from a lot of other Call of Duty games that I felt weren't doing enough different each iteration. A nice little touch that I liked is with the sniper rifles in the campaign. Whenever you hold your breath, the entire game slows down so you can line up the shot perfectly. I thought that was just a really neat little touch that they threw in there just for the campaign. While the performances in the game aren't the greatest, the models are pretty good. Uh, I thought the cutscenes were well directed and they're really high quality. And overall, the visuals in general are pretty strong. I wouldn't say they are the highest quality, like if you compare it to something like a Battlefield or something but it's definitely not an ugly game. It is very visually impressive. Another neat little touch that they added in here are heroic moments, which are basically, they pretty much act as like a collectible, I'd say, that you find throughout the levels. There'll be a moment where like someone is being pinned down by someone, and if you can get the guy off of them, then you get a heroic moment, and that person will like join up with your soldiers or something. I thought that was just like a nice little way to add little variations into the levels and little unique events that you can come across. The variation in the levels is also really strong from city squares to forests and like I said even in the tank missions where you're like you're going through cities that are reduced to rubble. You're always going somewhere new and I think that's one of the best parts about the campaign. The same can somewhat be said about multiplayer. I didn't play a whole lot of the multiplayer. I did play a little bit of it when the game was in beta a long time ago. I, th I don't think it's bad. It just feels like more Call of Duty. It's boots on the ground, so you're not having all the jetpacks and all that. You have kill streaks, weapon customization. It, it's pretty standard fare. And this game is also one of the first uh, non-Treyarch Call of Duties to include a zombies mode that is actually zombies. But similar to multiplayer, I mean, it, it feels like zombies. They have a mystery box, perks, weapons, waves of zombies, you do little things, a cast of colorful characters. 
it, it's all just more of the same. And to be honest, I've been kind of burned out on Call of Duty multiplayer and zombies for a long time. I just didn't spend a whole lot of time in those game modes. But yeah, for the most part, like I said at the top, Call of Duty World War II is an interesting game. Uh, it does a lot of stuff really good, and it also technically comes up short in a lot of ways. And it also isn't exactly the most original game. But I don't think it was wholeheartedly terrible. If you're looking for a Call of Duty game to play and you like the World War II setting, and maybe you haven't played Call of Duty in a while like I had, then this is a decent game to pick up if you can find it cheap. I wouldn't spend more than like $15 on it though.